Kelly Lane was born on March 21st, 1975 in Australia. Her parents were respected and well-known people in their community. Her father, Robert Lane, was a famous surfer, rugby player, and a retired police officer. Kelly attended McKellar Girls High School and did fairly well. In 1992, while she was in her last year of high school, she started a relationship with a boy named Eric Tyek. Kelly got pregnant but ended up having a termination. Kelly graduated from McKellar Girls High School and went on to the University of Newcastle, majoring in art. In 1994, Erin broke up with Kelly after she was caught having an affair with a married man. She was also pregnant for the second time, but decided to have a second termination. After getting her degree, she continued her studies at the Australian College of Physical Education. While studying, she got a part-time job working as a PE teacher at Ravenswood School for Girls. The same year Erin broke up with Kelly, Kelly began a new relationship with a man named Duncan Gillies. The two were inseparable, and within two months of dating, Duncan wanted to marry Kelly. Both Kelly and Duncan were into competitive sports, Kelly was a water polo player and had dreams of representing Australia at the 2000 Olympic Games. In 1995, Kelly gave birth to her first child. Unfortunately, the baby girl was not wanted and after playing at the finals in a water polo competition, Kelly gave her daughter up for adoption. She was legally adopted and, unbeknownst to Duncan, she listed him as the biological father. Kelly hid her pregnancy and never communicated with Duncan that she was pregnant. That same year, she was a member of the silver medal winning Australian junior women's team at the 1995 World Championships in Quebec, Canada. She was then chosen to play for the New South Wales water polo team. Shortly after giving birth, Kelly got pregnant again for the fourth time. Kelly's stomach was growing, but she was oblivious that other people were noticing. She was living her life, going to a great school, working, and playing the sport that she loved. Rumors were spreading about her being pregnant, but Kelly paid no attention to them. Kelly gave birth to a baby named Tegan Lee Lane at Auburn Hospital on September 12, 1996. Two days after giving birth without having been discharged, Kelly left the hospital with Tegan through the fire exit at around 11 a.m. and by 3 p.m. she made it to her parents' house but with no baby in sight. Days later, she attended a friend's wedding with Duncan but there was no talk about Tegan. Although Kelly and Duncan attended the wedding together, that same year, Duncan bought a house in a different suburb than Kelly. He also came clean about him cheating on her with one of her teammates. After this newly found information, their relationship was no longer as strong as it once was. They eventually broke up in 1998. In 1999, Kelly fell pregnant again for the fifth time. She was unhappy and tried to have another termination, but was denied because she was at a viable gestation. A few months later, in May of 1999, Kelly gave birth to a baby boy, but she put him up for adoption. When speaking with her social worker, she informed her that Duncan was the child's father and that it was her first child ever. The social worker was able to get in contact with Duncan and he denied being the father of the baby, but he also learned of Kelly's previous adoption. An investigation began and it was discovered that Kelly had more than two pregnancies. None of her family and friends were made aware of the pregnancies though. She most likely wanted to protect her image and reputation. She also believed that having a child would hinder her chances of being in the Olympics. Police spoke with Kelly and she claimed that she gave birth to Tegan and gave her to a family in Perth. Investigators had to gather information, but their official investigation began in 2001 after gathering evidence and secret recordings. They also had documentation from the hospital Tegan was at, even though they never officially discharged Kelly and the baby. This time, when she spoke with police, she told them that Duncan was not the father of Tegan. Instead, it was a man named Andrew Norris, or Morris. She forgot his last name. She also changed her story and said that Tegan was not with the family in Perth, but was with the father, Andrew. She claimed that she cheated on Duncan with Andrew after meeting him at an inner city pub. She claimed that she handed Tegan over to Andrew in the parking lot of the Auburn Hospital. A search for Tegan began. Police eventually concluded that Andrew was a made-up person. There was a search all across Australia, but no man fit the description Kelly gave. A coroner declared that although there was a small chance Tegan could be alive, he was comfortably satisfied that Tegan Lane was deceased. Police had searched almost 9,000 primary schools and there was no Tegan. With that, the case was transferred to a homicide squad. While all of this was going on, Kelly got married and gave birth to another daughter. Homicide Squad decided not to charge Kelly because they did not have enough evidence. 
The director of public prosecutions, however, chose to charge Kelly with murder and her trial began in 2010. The jury was unable to come to a unanimous decision, so Justice Wheely advised the majority verdict of 11 to 1 being acceptable. With that, the jury found Kelly Lane guilty of murder of Tegan Lee Lane. She was sentenced to 18 years in prison. While in prison, Kelly has not been a model prisoner. She has intimidated other inmates and even people on the outside. Here are a few of her letters. Pause if you need more time to read. Kate was upset that a woman was with her on and off again boyfriend, Patrick. The woman does not want to be identified, but Kelly had made many, including guards, intimidate this person. Here are some of the things she said in letters to Patrick. Try not to have her at our house. No photos. Don't compare us. If she's a doesn't mean I'm one or can't get my turn. Balance us out. If you're giving her a lot of attention and time, think how I might need some. Don't go down on her. This is non-negotiable. Say something mean or deny her something every day. Wipe that confident, smug smile off her face at least once for me. This final Christmas letter was the last straw for Patrick. He was actually still visiting Kelly at the Silverwater Women's Correctional Center throughout their two-year relationship, but he had enough with the threats and harassment of his new girl. This also started an internal investigation because Kelly had access to social media and prison guards were helping her smuggle letters and other items outside of prison. While all of this was going on, Kelly had many supporters who believed she was innocent and were fighting very hard to get her out of prison. I think this is a wicked woman. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you are new here, thank you for watching and if you like this video, please subscribe.